Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the press conference today. Uh, the rumors are true. After winning my third title, I decided to take a step back away from the game that I love. And I am going to make an empirical rule video and post it on YouTube. Alright, mathletes, so let's go ahead and talk about this empirical rule, right? One of my favorite topics. Alright, so what is this empirical rule about? So let's say you gather all your data and you look at its histogram or any other type of graph, and what you notice is that its shape is bell shaped, right? It's symmetric here, nice bell shaped curve or somewhat bell shaped, right? So if we have this shape, we're allowed to use this empirical rule, right? And because it's symmetric, we know that half of the values are gonna lie to the left of the mean, and half of the values, right, are gonna lie to the right of the mean, right? So here's what our empirical rule says. If you were to go out one standard deviation, right, both sides, both directions, what you're gonna note is that 68% of our data points are gonna be within one standard deviation of the mean. Right, so write that down. That's the first thing we note. The second thing is if we go two standard deviations away from the mean, right? So if we go two standard deviations out, what we're gonna see is that 95% of the data is gonna fall within two standard deviations. And if we go three standard deviations, we're practically gonna see all the data points uh, within three standard deviations of the mean and a number that's associated with that is 99.7%, but a lot of textbooks are gonna say almost all of the data, all right? Because practically, that's almost everything. And when we do the math here, right, what you're gonna need when you're using this is, of course, you're gonna need the mean, right? And you have to decide, is this the population mean? Is it the, the sample mean? And then we're gonna need the standard deviation, right? And so we're gonna calculate those things and then uh, we could go ahead and get these cutoff points or these boundaries, whatever you wanna call them. All right, so let's look at some numbers so you could see how to apply the empirical rule. So let's say Dr. Math Studios was to visit all 50 states and we were to say, all right, what percent of the population is subscribed to Dr. Math? And if you haven't done so, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our videos, all right? So what we did is we went to all 50 states. It took us a while, right? And we got the population percent, right? So here we have the percentage of people uh, from each state, right? That are subscribed to Dr. Math on YouTube, all right? So what we did is we got a little histogram here and what we see here that it's approximately bow shaped right it doesn't have to be exactly bow shaped but more or less we have a bow shaped curve here so what that's going to tell us um, that we could use is the empirical rule so now we're going to be able to utilize the empirical rule uh, to gather some data and to make some judgment calls here what do you talk about well let's take a look all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna gather all those numbers, maybe plug them into the calculator, maybe do it by hand, right? Whatever it is you wanna practice, there's a lot of them, so I'll let the calculator do the work depending on what program you're using. And in future videos, I'm gonna walk you through how to do this on our calculator. And I'm gonna use a TI-84 calculator to walk you through this. All right, so one thing the calculator is gonna give us is a mean and to make things easy just so we understand what's going on I'm gonna approximate it I'm gonna say the mean is about 13 all right and the standard deviation I'm gonna give us another nice number right I'm gonna say the standard deviation is about one all right for this example all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compute all these quantities so we're gonna take the mean minus the standard deviation and the mean plus the standard deviation right so what that's saying is we're gonna go one standard deviation out all right so let's go ahead and do that first so let me get my 13 because i know that's the mean and let me subtract my standard deviation which is one and so we end up with 12. so there's that computation and then we're going to take the 13 plus one and then we're going to get 14. all right so now let's do the same thing for each one of these so now we have 
the mean minus two standard deviations. So we're gonna take 13 minus two times the standard deviation, which was one. So we got 13 minus two. So we end up with 11. And on this next one, we're gonna have 13 plus two times one, which is two. So at 13 plus two. All right, so again, just make sure you use your order of operations first and you're multiplying and then you add, all right? Never do 13 minus two and then times whatever that is, right? That's incorrect. Order of operations, all right? And then likewise, we got 13 minus three times the standard deviation, which is one, and that's gonna give us 10. And then our last computation is 13 plus three times our standard deviation, which is one. So we end up with 16. All right, so now what does all this mean? Well, follow me, let's take a look. All right, mathletes, so we made all those calculations. What does what do all these calculations tell us? Well, number one, they tell us that we must subscribe to Dr. Math if you haven't done so, all right? And smash that like button. All right, so here we go. What we found is that if you go one standard deviation out, right, you're gonna be somewhere between 12 and 14%. And so what we see here is that there are 68% of our data points fall between 12 and 14% uh, percent because we're looking at percentages, right? So we say that 68% of the data f are gonna fall between this number and this number. And in this case, what were, what were we looking for or what were we examining? While well, we were examining the percentage, the amount of people per state, right? that were subscribed. The second one, look at what we got. Our values for two standard deviations were 11 and 15, right? So here, when I go two standard deviations out, I'm between 11 and 15. So what does that tell us? Well, when I go two standard deviations out, I know that 95% of my data points are gonna fall between 11 and 15% because again, we're examining percentages, right? If we were talking about uh, cars or exa examining number of cars, uh, then we'd say that 95% right, of the data points would fall anywhere between 11 and 15 cars, if that's what we're talking about. So always understand the situation, all right? Always understand what it is that you're looking at, all right? And then, uh, when I go three standard deviations out, I know that 99.7%, so basically all the data, right? Almost all the data is gonna fall between 10 and 16%. All right, mathletes, so there you have it. And I love this diagram because then you could answer other questions, all right? So other questions might be, uh, what percent of the data points fell between say 11 and 14. And the way I chopped it up because it's symmetric, we know one standard deviation is 68%. So that means that if I were to take that in half, I know that this piece right here, right, is 34% and this piece right here is 34%, right? Because they add up to 68% and they're symmetric, right? It's even right down that middle. So the way I have it cut here is that if I wanted to know what percentage fell between 11 and 14, right, 11 and 14, I would just add up these individual percentages and I could answer more complicated questions just like that, right? So again, in our next video, we're gonna get into these more complicated examples, but I wanted to give you an idea of the empirical rule and how to use it. All right, math needs, so that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll be examining more specific questions related to the empirical rule. We'll see you next time. Peace.